Hello, this is Mike Anderson, your Government Affairs Chair for NEMV and Vice President for National Association of Mortgage Brokers. Anyway, listen, we testified on Wednesday, July 13th, uh, before the Subcommittee of Insurance and Community uh, Development with the House Financial Service Committee. Went very well. All 10 uh, witnesses did a very good job. But guys, there's some false information being floated around. And let me give you the real facts here. The number one thing that's floating around was this revelation that the Federal Reserve Board, Sandra Bronstein, announced that a loan officer can be paid a commission on a consumer paid transaction. She did not say that. Guys, the rule is still the same as it was on July 6. I have with me here the written testimony for the Federal Reserve, and let me read it to you word for word. It states in here, mortgage brokerage firm that is paid directly by the consumer may not, may not pay a commission specified to that transaction to its loan officer. However, it does go on to say, and I think this is where the confusion was from Congressman Sherman, who asked me the question, aren't you delighted that you can now pay your loan officers the commission on consumer pay? And I had to tell Mr. Sherman that uh, was not aware of that. So anyway, but what it says here, I'll read it to you word for word, the broker can still provide its loan officers with incentive compensation in addition to salaries or hourly wage without violating the rule. With that said, guys, there are a tremendous amount of mortgage brokers out there paying their loan officers on the consumer paid transaction. And what I'm hearing is they're doing it, not salary, hourly, bonuses, marketing, all kinds of different avenues. I want to caution you. This is a slippery slope. Be extremely careful. Make sure you do talk to legal counsel before you come up with some plan. It's very important. Uh, one of the uh, witnesses that was there before our panel uh, was Ann Norton with CSBS. And she did say to the committee members that they are very confused uh, with the new guidelines and they're asking for guidance. So after all, they're going to be the regulators are going to come out and examine you and I and to look at our compensation. So just make sure, play it safe, uh, that you do check with your regulators. Also, um, Congressman Gary Miller is introduced a bill yesterday to allow a 30% reduction in our compensation if we want to do so and it's mirrored with the Barney Frank letter which states at closing. So don't be confused, it depends on how you read it, uh, but it's a great first step and we thank Congressman Miller and by the way we want to thank our good friends uh, with CAMP, that's California, uh, Fred Krieger if you're listening good job on working with Gary Miller, Fred Krieger is on our uh, Government Affairs Committee We've talked about this and they've got an extremely great relationship with uh, Congressman Miller and uh, so uh, we, we compliment them very much for working on this. It is, a, it is a step, there's other things that may be introduced with it, but we're trying not to do just to let everybody know, these are called technical corrections technical corrections. We don't want to try to amend Dodd-Frank at this time because we'll never make it through the Senate. So this is a good first step. Uh, and we'll see how the final outcome will be. So with that said, uh, thank you very much for everyone's support. The hearing went well, like I said before, and uh, it was just amazing listening to some of the witnesses' testimony. And uh, we did talk about the qualified residential mortgage and I'm going to share with you uh, the chart that I showed them. All right, everybody, here's the actual chart that we displayed at the hearing. Uh, in fact, Maxine Waters, Congressman, uh, Congresswoman uh, Maxine Waters asked me the question, uh, what can you advise us? How can we, what's an easy fix to try to fix this uh, mortgage crisis? And this is the chart, some of you have seen this before, but basically this shows a history of foreclosures uh, rates by loan type from 1998 to 2007. 1998 to 2007. These lines here, I know they're hard to see, 
These represent subprime fixed rate mortgages and subprime arms, which are these two lines that you see going off the chart. Here's 1998, here we had a recession in 2001, and you can see the little spike up here. And here's 2007. This bottom line represents prime arms and prime fixed rate mortgages. Guys, if I was to lie, I wouldn't make this chart look this good, okay? And by the way, from 2007 through 2010, the graph is almost identical. So the bottom line is I used an example of the Ford Pinto. I said when the Pinto started blowing up when you rear-ended it, or better yet, uh, Vioxx was a drug that was uh, harmful to people, they got rid of the product. They didn't go after the pharmacists, they didn't go after the drug stores that manufactured the product, and they didn't go to the uh, uh, doctors who prescribed it and impose new regulations and guidelines on those entities. So that's the same analogy I used, Nam used. I said, guys, you simply pull this from the shelf, okay, like a, a bad drug, pull it from the shelf. So in other words, on QRM, leave this alone, guys. And we pleaded in the oral testimony, don't try to fix something that's not broken. Leave it alone for crying out loud. So this is the prime mortgages. That did not cause the mortgage crisis. All right, so let me wrap this up. That, like I said before, the hearing went very well. The, the bottom line message from NAM about QRM was, guys, leave it alone. Enough already. And we had great conversations afterwards. We had a conversation with uh, the chairwoman Bickert and uh, Barney Frank's office and uh, Maxine Waters' office. So anyway, thanks for all your support. We'll keep you updated. We'll let you know the progress of the Gary Miller bill. And there's other things in the works as well. And uh, keep your chins up. I hope everyone has a wonderful weekend, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.